Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. So today I'm going to make a video about why, unfortunately, I am not going to be playing a whole lot of Path of Exile this league. Now, I did play the new league when it was released a couple of days ago. And um, I'm making this video on two parts because, uh, you know, when I stop playing, and I'll go over all the reasons and more of that, um, you know, a big Reddit thread came up, and a lot of people take this stuff out of context. A lot of the time, people see, like, a 10-second clip, and they're like, oh, this Crip guy, he's just so complaining about everything. He probably doesn't even like games anymore. Well, that's kind of crazy, and uh, I kind of wanted to go over some of these things and give you guys the full details of uh, what I like about Path of Exile, uh, what I look forward to, and uh, what's happening in this league. So, Path of Exile has, like, leagues every few months. They have, like, a new mechanic, and it's usually a pretty major mechanic. They combo it usually with a pretty big balance update, uh, or at least some kind of shake-up, some reason to play a different character or new build. It might not be better than the character that you played in the previous league, but the journey of trying to figure that out and crafting a build is really my my favorite time playing games. And I really mean that. I think the overall new league experience in Path of Exile for like years now has been the most fun that I have playing games. And I love playing games. Okay. Now, I don't play Path of Exile full time because, well, I just don't play Path of Exile full time. When a new league comes out, as much as I love it, I usually have a waning interest three weeks, sometimes four weeks, sometimes with Trial the Ancestor, like almost two months. But it's usually a matter of weeks. But still, that's great. I play a ton those weeks. Usually when a new league comes out, I just stream Path of Exile for like up to a week straight, as much as I possibly can, sacrificing sleep and sanity because that's just how much I love playing Path of Exile. It's an overall fantastic game. And this league's overall uh, pretty blunder release on Ruthless uh, is so far the exception. And I look forward to future leagues nevertheless. Um, it's, it was probably the biggest miss for a league for what I like about Path of Exile ever. Uh, but I've been playing Path of Exile for over 10 years. One bad league isn't really enough for me to even, you know, waver my interest in the game and genre and PoE2 and all the rest. Okay. Now, before we get into the league, I just want to quickly summarize why do I play Ruthless. So, Ruthless is a game mode in Path of Exile where you basically get, like, no loot and your characters get crappy versions of gear and currency and ascendancies and all that. It's a super restrictive game mode. Um, everything is scarce, even the maps themselves are scarce. It takes real effort and investment and, you know, crafty strategies to actually climb the tiers of maps. And a lot of these elements are why I loved playing Path of Exile when it first was released. These days, Path of Exile has grown to a bigger audience, but it has overall grown to a game that there's just more of everything. I think pretty quickly, the Path of Exile devs realize that if they take away power regularly, people will generally not be super interested in the game or a league. So what they usually do with a new league is they give you more character power and they give you a stronger opponent. Now that seems pretty basic, but they usually do a pretty good job of it. And if they don't, they usually tune it pretty well after like a few days when a new league comes out. So overall, it's great. The new league experience is really fantastic. Now, over... Over a decade of releasing new leagues three, four times a year, it's come to a situation where the game is um, just pretty easy for like a veteran who knows a lot of the mechanics. And the overabundance of everything is actually really tedious. Um, what I mean by that is um, I don't like doing the campaign on the normal, you know, normal Path of Exile play because it's just so easy. There's speedrunners that have cleared it in two hours. And they've done that because it's so easy. 
people have talked about, it's like, hey, what's the problem with the league mechanic right now in the campaign? I don't get it. Yeah, it's forced, but who cares? It doesn't even, doesn't even phase me. Yeah, it doesn't phase those characters because the campaign is so easy for experienced players. You have racers completing the campaign wearing, like, not even gear so they can run faster and, like, 700 health, just just enough to not get one-shotted by the mechanics they can't avoid, and they still do it flawlessly in a matter of hours. Now, not everyone plays at that level, but, you know, if you take a little bit of time and care in making a character, uh, it really is really easy to do the campaign, again, as an experienced player playing a good build. But, you know, that's where I'm at. That's where a lot of people are at. And the overabundance of maps is pretty crazy. We have a lot of people regularly pushing the map tiers and killing the pinnacle bosses on a brand new account within six hours is kind of the benchmark. Uh, some people have done it in five. Again, brand new account, basically clearing all the high tier maps. Now we have 17, but you know, up to 16 and doing the basic pinnacle bosses. Uh, five, six hours. And in terms of like currency, um, when I have played the normal version of the game, and I did play that last season as well with Wildwood, um, it's just like your your stash is just insane. You have thousands and thousands and thousands of currencies. It's just they're they're not like meaningful at that point. Uh, and to give you guys a, a very specific example, so I played I actually played on launch because I wanted to see what the game was like, thinking Poe would basically be released in June. Got delayed a little bit. I figured, well, this might be the last time I actually play PoE 1 until post PoE 2, and who knows what that's going to be like, right? I might just go ham on PoE 2, might, might just be better in every single way. I don't know. Hopefully, you know, try not to hype myself up for games too much. But yeah, I tried the normal version of the game last season with Wildwood. I did the campaign in like four hours. Uh, the whole map thing was really easy, it got to like mid-90s. Uh, it was pretty fun to get a lot of loot for like a couple of days. And then I had my character with pretty powerful gear in every single slot. Um, and on like day three or so, day four, uh, I just kind of went over my character. It's like, how can I make my character a little bit stronger given like the crafting currency that I have? And even though Path of Exile crafting system is really interesting and really well done, the overabundance of the regular game makes it insane. And I know it was extra insane in Wildwood, but still, the deliberate, the, the, the precise example here is on like four days into the Wildwood League, the easiest upgrade I could get on my character was to make another helmet. Uh, and helmet is a really important slot for minion builds because you can get plus two minion skills. But the plus two minion skill affix is crazy rare. Sometimes you have to use thousands and thousands of alterations and yeah you want to use it on a good base and you still kind of need the land the augmentation for a stat not to be too bad if you're crafting it from the ground up in solo cell found. So the first plus two minion helmet that I made on that character again within the first few days it took me about 20,000 alteration orbs to get the base and then craft it from there, and it was a pretty good helmet. But after three or four days, that was my worst piece of gear. So did I have another 20,000 alteration orbs to try that again? I actually did. I did have another 20,000 alteration orbs, but I just realized that I didn't really feel like staring at the item and seeing the stats move and clicking 20,000 times to get an extra 100 health on my character. That's basically the point where I didn't really want to play that character anymore. So I tried a few other fancy builds, and then like a week after the, the last league came out, I went and played Ruthless again. Uh, and I actually made it to level 91 using like one of the new transfigured gem setups on like a hybrid minion detonate dead character. Which actually was a really cool, really cool character. Um, in Ruthless, getting to like level 91 is over level 100 in terms of how many mobs and time you have to put into the game. Level 100 is about level 90 in Ruthless. And that's actually, 91 is the lowest level I have had my highest level character in Ruthless on any league since Ruthless was launched, which is over a year ago now. So I play a lot of Ruthless. I love playing the game. Okay. And I kind of know what I sign up for. Ruthless is a hard version of the game, but it's interesting 
because everything is meaningful and the balance is still within a realm of it being possible and in my opinion fun. Now, how did I work out this league? So this league, just to kind of get all the details out, I'm playing a uh, Detonate Dead, it's an Ignite build, it's a Golemancer, it's an Elementalist in Ruthless, the ascendancies are much worse than normal, so the the kind of, you know, cool thing that I'm doing, I'm using the Stone Golem of Safeguarding, which gives you melee damage is taken from your Stone Golem's life before you. This is all melee, this is physical and elemental damage. In the regular game, you can get this to 100%, so you don't even take melee damage, which is crazy overpowered. Um, but in Ruthless, you can get it with just moderate effort and no gear or crazy jewels. You can get it about 50%. So if I take away 50% of the melee damage, and I'm also using whatever the thing is, uh, I don't know where it is, the Chaos Golem, eventually this will be 5%. We can scale it to about, uh, I think it's 20%. Or just on, I think it's maybe 17 or 18 percent physical damage reduction. Basically, if I use Chaos Golem and Golem of Safeguarding, and I scale Golem effect, I don't need to worry about armor. So that is like an insane thing in Ruthless, and I had a pretty pretty good build worked out. Obviously, Detonate Dead with Ignite on Elementalist is going to do sufficient damage. Survivability is there. It's a cool character. You got minions. We use the specters. We don't invest in specters, but the specters have a lot of energy shield because I found some some heist specters that have over 300 per, 360 percent life, which is the max now for detonate dead to improve the corpse pool. And these ones actually have um, energy shield as life 100 percent. So that means that I don't actually need to invest in life regeneration for minions because they'll just stay alive because they have like 30,000 energy shield. Um, so even though they don't have life regen, it doesn't really matter. They won't really die. And if the golems die, it doesn't really matter because they get automatically rezzed after four seconds. Right. Pretty cool. Okay. So pretty cool. Pretty good build. Obviously, uh, it's like a one link right now in most of these skills. So, you know, a lot, a lot to go. Level 77. But like, you know, this is, oh, this is two days after it came out. Um, I stopped playing this character while it was like eighth on the ladder. So... Yeah, level 77 is not that much in the normal game, but in Ruthless, with the new league mechanic, it's quite a bit. All right. So, what is the new league mechanic? So, basically, you see where I am? I'm actually in Act 1 in the first zone in that you click on. Like, the first one is the town. Obviously, there's no mobs in the town. But the first one you actually click on is Mud Flats. So, the very first zone that you, that you enter from another zone... It has this little thing here, the Lantern of Aramor. So if you if you don't click on that and you just zone in, basically a good portion of the monsters in there will have buffs. Okay, so if we click on it, we can see what the buffs are. These have tiers. These tiers go to five. So this is like a 50% increased life. This is a multiplier because it's like it's kind of like the mobs. They just have base stats. They don't really have like gear or anything. So it's not like a player. Like if I got 50% life it would give me like actually like 20% life. But 50% life on a mob is actually 50% life. And this is tier one. Um, so this goes way, way higher. This goes to like several hundred percent. And this like physical has extra fire damage and the higher tiers, they get fire penetration. I think it goes to like 25% elemental penetration. So your resists basically don't even do anything. And the idea is that in this menu, you can be like, well, the Roas are really bad monsters, so I can maybe avoid the zombies. You can move these around. So I'll be like, okay, I'll do that on the zombies, and then I'll put the life on the water elementals, and then I can just not run near the water elementals. And then there's like a few things I don't have right now where you can replace the monster entirely, and they can get like cool effects and unique drops like the tattoos, which I got a few of. And trust me, if you do that, those mobs are going to be absolutely insane. Like, like I did the tattoo one, the mobs, all of my specters died instantly. My specters have 60,000 life and cap resists in a tier 2 map. They just died instantly. Um, so be prepared for some crazy overtune stuff. So why do you just want to make stuff harder? Well, sometimes these have bonuses, but uh, the bonuses uh, don't really work all that great and ruthless. Um, give you guys an example. 
Uh, I did a 4 affix rare monster, and it had 1200% rarity as its affix, and it dropped a single item, and it was white. So it was not enough rarity to improve it to a blue item, which is still pretty much useless for Ruthless. All right. um, so yeah, and these mobs that are like buffed and stuff, sometimes, like really rarely, they're going to drop like a corpse, and you go to the corpse like zone that activates when you activate this mechanic and basically you can like craft stuff you can put as many corpses as you want beside each other maximum 64 I guess I don't know maybe you can do more if I like, put them down or something and um, yeah if you just like if you just put an item down so okay armor with int requirement craft all right so make gloves this glove is gonna have one mod it's gonna be a blue item basically in the normal game, it has four affixes, but in Ruthless, to make one item uh, that's any good, you need to get five of the corpses that are plus one modifier. And those are not exactly common. Um, I have found exactly ten of them, and you might be asking, like, how do you know you found exactly ten? Because I've crafted exactly two items. So I played for, like, 22 hours. Um... I used like 30 corpses to craft this ring, um, which sucks. And then uh, I used like 20 corpses to craft this amulet, which also sucks. But it's the best one that I have because it's like, you know, this is one of my rings, for example. It's ruthless, right? So it's not, <laughs> not like I can use alchemy orbs on gear or something like that, all right? So that's basically the mechanic. In the normal game, it might work a little bit better, but in Ruthless, it is just really, really sad. All right. So uh, why is it not good in Ruthless? OK, let's go over that. So it's forced. Uh, you cannot opt out of it. So if you hate the Roas in Mudflats, the best you can do is make everything else much stronger. And I'm pretty sure in some cases you can't even do that. I, I think you can, like, you, I think you can get, like, three affixes here. It's, like, random. So you might not even be able to avoid crazy rows in in mud flats. Like they, they're going to do fire damage. How much? Some of these modifiers are guaranteed stuns. Okay? So if you're not, if you're not clicking on this and moving these things around, if you're just like, hey, yeah, whatever, I'll just, they're just going to get a little bit stronger. Yeah, you can get, like, archers, and you get, like, an archer pack with guaranteed stun in, like, Act 4, and your character will literally never move until it's dead or you log out. Uh, just to give you guys a bit of a briefing on how some of the modifiers work, um, one, of the, one of the modifiers that I put in was, like, drop a gem, the pack leader or something, is, like, one of those mob ones. The mobs that spawned did, like, an ice spear, and, and it chained, and... When it chained, it created more projectiles, and it was also chaining off walls. But it didn't actually say that on on the corpse that I put in there. Um, so basically, I would instantly die. They were corpse camping me on the res spot of that zone. I really wanted to kill them because they dropped gems in Ruthless. Like, again, we're using a single support gem on the entire character while I was playing for like 20 something hours and that's how ruthless works so the drop and gems i really want to kill them. i couldn't kill them because they would kill all my minions and instantly kill me the moment they were on the screen because there were like a bajillion ice spears everywhere that would kill me in like almost one hit by the way so that's the kind of crap that you you face in terms of monsters um and yeah uh, it's forced you have to play it it is extremely overtuned. Now, you may have played through the campaign in Not Ruthless, and you might be disagreeing with me. And you know what? You're right. But that's, that's because you're not playing Ruthless. That's because the campaign, if you're a veteran of Path of Exile, is really easy. So if something has, like, adrenaline, which is almost like triple the damage, which is a common modifier at low level, by the way, um, it's actually fine. Because if you triple the damage of a monster in the campaign, it's still probably not going to kill you. Or you're just going to kill it before you even notice that it does damage. Because, yes, as a veteran player playing the normal game in the campaign, it's, like, really easy. So it's fine. But the thing is, 
There's a lot of new players in Path of Exile. There's a lot of people trying this mechanic that are not veteran players. So the forced aspect is really terrible, in my opinion. The overtuned aspect is not good. I do think there's likely some bugs. Uh, for example, that mob that I couldn't kill that was supposed to drop gems, I did kill it in a really low level zone. And they did drop gems, but only a third of them dropped gems. And it didn't say a third of them dropped gems. It said the leader of the pack dropped gems. You know it's the leader of the pack because it's a unique monster. I was getting about one gem out of three kills on the pack leaders. So that wasn't working. Possibly uh, a lot of modifiers aren't working. Like maybe 1200% rarity shouldn't drop white items. Maybe that's a bug too. I don't know. Um, there's just it's, Some stuff is definitely bugged. Uh, but it's really hard to tell what is and what isn't without extensive testing, which is day two of the league. I haven't done that. But overall, it's not that much fun. Um, it's not that much fun. When you do like a map, you're, you also have to do it. So like you put a map in, activate the map. It's like, oh wow, 1200 rarities. It's just one monster, by the way. And again, it still drops white items. 600 quantity and rootless. I have not felt the difference in... Let me show you guys my currency tab. 20 hours. This is it. And I pick up all my crumbs, by the way. Um, I think I found three fusing orbs. Someone made a post in that, in that Reddit thread. It's like, hey, you, with, with the quantity modifier, you might just get like three fusings, and that's really lame. No, 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 no. I've been doing the forced thing in every single map for over 20 hours, and I've only found three fusings in 20 hours. So the amount of overall loot that you get is like really, really bad. This is the least loot ever in Ruthless uh, of any league um, because it's not just like, like in Sanctum, I just didn't do Sanctum. But the regular game, I was doing it on a, you know, standardized difficulty. In this, I have to face crazy monsters. I have to face crazy monsters and they're still not dropping anything. But because I'm facing crazy monsters, I'm doing these maps a lot slower. So the loot is actually the worst ever in Ruthless. Um, that's why like 20 hours, this is the best ring that I have found, okay? And I don't believe I need the dexterity. I don't even need the dexterity, okay? I'm using this ring because I haven't found a ring that has more than 26 cold resistance. That's, that's the level of, of loot that you're getting in this, this league. It's also super tedious because if you don't modify the things, you are going to get one shot. While the campaign is trivialized difficulty, even in the regular game, when you start doing like red maps, yeah, if you triple the damage of some monsters in maps, well, then like every character is going to start getting one shot. Oh, you're a juggernaut with lots of armor, are you? Well, you are going to do pretty well until you face a monster that penetrates 25% of your resistances so your armor doesn't do anything and you get, like, two-shotted <laughs> from, like, crap monsters that otherwise don't do anything. So, it's not fun. In Ruthless, it's super not rewarding. Um, it's super tedious. And ultimately, and this is, like, kind of the benchmark here, um, this mechanic makes the overall playing of Path of Exile, again, in Ruthless at least, I haven't played the regular game, but in Ruthless, it's more fun to play without this mechanic, okay? It's more fun to just, like, log out, make a new character in Standard, and pretend like a new league didn't just launch. So that's how bad it is. Now, if it's a mechanic that I could opt out of, like last league, Wildwood was pretty rough and ruthless. Arguably, it was still worth it, but it was pretty rough. So some people at least didn't do that much of it or didn't go crazy with it until they kind of adjusted the difficulty and the rewards. It was a mechanic you could completely ignore, um, as with just about every other league, almost every other league, uh, until, you know, they uh, adjusted it, which they're pretty good about doing, uh, usually a few, a few days in. This mechanic is a little bit different. I feel like the adjustment for this um, is not going to be like, hey, we'll just like tweak two things and then it's good. You know, if suddenly these mobs start dropping like three times as much loot, I think it's still worse than just playing standard Ruthless. Um, and with that, 
the main point of realization that I basically called it quits, uh, I was just thinking, like, what am I playing for? If I was playing, you know, in, in a previous league, in Ruthless especially, sometimes you get, like, a unique item. It's really rare. You can get a unique item that might actually lead you to make a new character. Um, and I was just thinking it over. It's like, there's just no way that I want to play through the campaign again in Ruthless. Which is insane, because last league, after getting to like level 98 in the normal game and playing like three then I played Ruthless, and I played like four characters through the campaign, like three of them were Guardian. It was just fun to play the campaign. In Ruthless, the campaign is actually really well balanced. But not when random mobs do triple damage, or have like adrenaline, or stun you with every single hit. So yeah, basically the realization is, uh, it wasn't really fun to play right now, I can keep grinding for some items, but then I don't really want to make a new character because I don't want to play through the Ruthless campaign anymore because it's horrible and just pointless. Uh, again, especially awful in Ruthless. And the kind of cherry on top is, I believe map scarcity is worse right now in Ruthless. Um, they kind of changed the Atlas a bit, and I was interested because I love change. Even if it's a little bit worse, if it's like interesting change, I'm all for it doesn't have to be better every, every league. It doesn't have to be easier every league. You know, I'm, I'm not one of those guys. But um, the Ruthless Atlas system is like um, you have to kind of invest more in getting maps. Um, and I think the map sustain is worse for two reasons. Um, you have to micromanage the, the thing in every single map or you're just going to die. But you can't die in even software. You can't die in you'll never level. Levels are so slow. Um, and the maps themselves take way longer because, you know, there's, it's like, oh, hey, this mob has 300% increased health, which means they have quadruple health, by the way. And I think it goes higher than that. I believe it goes higher than that. Um, so it's, it's, there's like an extra step of not even really playing the game that you have to do for every map. Doing the map is slower. All this slowness means you're getting less loot and less currency. So the progression for maps in Ruthless, because of that, is like way worse. Like, you know, again, I play Ruthless every league a lot. I think this is the worst map progression ever by an enormous margin. It's hard to say exactly. I can't tell you it takes like three times more time than normal because, yeah, I didn't really go through with the whole process, but I do have a lot of experience with that process before this league comes out. And let me tell you, it is a very poor start for map progression in Ruthless. All right. So what do they need to do to fix it? Um, I can't really go into specifics because it's such like, there's so many problems around it. That's why I don't think it's going to get better like tomorrow. Um, but the, the first thing that's like super important is there needs to be a way for you not to engage with the league mechanic. Like when, when you go into a zone and, and you have just like, if you don't want to do the menu, you just like get killed. Just like random mobs have quadruple health, adrenaline. Every mob is gonna stun you, right? That's not okay. Um, so I feel like if you just walk into a zone and don't click on the necromancy ball thing to adjust the crap, if you don't click on it, I think the mechanic shouldn't activate. Yeah, I think it should just like actually be made optional. And I don't think it's like that much to ask for. I hope it's not that hard to implement a change like that, but I think a change like that is really needed for this league. And the other one is it needs to be worthwhile to a point where um, either it's more fun or you get more stuff than not playing the league. But right now, when it comes to Ruthless, it is just across the board worse than playing not league it's worse than just playing standard ruthless um, and that is pretty mind-blowing because i think that is like ultimately the super bare bones like line you have to cross when you make a new league if if it's more fun to just not play the league then there there's an issue so that's where i'm at again um a lot of context there and yeah, I have been playing Path of Exile in streaming for like 30-something hours uh, in the last two days. So 
Uh, I probably could have made this video a few minutes shorter, but thank you for bearing with me, and I hope it's been interesting. And maybe I'll play a bit of PoE if they, like, implement some changes very soon, but I think it's a tough problem for them to solve because it's so rough on so many ways, especially for Ruthless, and I don't know how much, you know, dev time Ruthless even gets. But in any case, I will see you guys next league at the very least. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.